My name's Nicole. I am been a longtime friend of Eve, who usually teaches this class. And so I'm I'm stepping in tonight and I'm really, really thrilled to be in with this community. I know that she has been building this and holding this this um beautiful safe container for all of you for a long time. So I really feel honored to to be brought in as a part of it. Does anybody have anything that they want to share ahead of time? Any maybe something something that happened earlier today that uh, that brought you joy. And we have this sort of microphone for people who need to talk. Um, and it's not amplified, it's only so the people on Zoom can hear. Um, but I have a niece and um, it's my oldest niece and she had a baby. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Hooray. Um, a little girl, uh, I think yesterday at like 3 a.m. Yeah. And so a very, very newborn named awesome. Lainey. Lainey. So we have a, a new little baby in the family. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing. Yeah. That's our, our topic tonight is on awakening joy. So it is related to our topic. Yeah. So today... Um, was the last day I saw my juniors, like I teach high school. So I have, I keep my students for two years. And so um, my students got up after, at the end of class and he's like, he came up to me and he's like the 17 year old boy. And he was like, can I give you a hug? Oh, and he like gave me this hug and it wasn't just like a hug. He just like leaned in and oh. full on hug. Wow. It was like, I was like, whoa. And he's like, Thank you so much. It's been such a great yeah. time being in your class. I was just like, oh my God. Amazing. So that was really sweet. And I, and then that started, like he did that. And then like a bunch of kids are like, I want to give you a hug too. <laughs> it was the sweetest thing. It was amazing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is very joyful. So yeah, please, please do share. Uh, I have a fourth grader who just finished fourth grade and she got her braces off yesterday. And Ooh. that is, <laughs> that's a big day. She yeah. Just finished fourth grade. Yep. And she is doing her, she did all her chores independently today without any fighting. And she learned to make her own blanched broccoli this week, which was also very exciting for me. <laughs> so many wins. Really very big. Yeah. Big week. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Oh, please. We could easily spend the whole time just doing this, right? What can we celebrate in each other's lives? It's so good. Hi. Um, my, I have a daughter who works as a nurse at a um, nursing facility. Yeah. And she was talking to me about, they were talking to me about their work today, earlier today, and talked about this impulse that they had about an elderly patient who was having a hard time. And my daughter had the just thought this person needed to go to the hospital and a lot of the other nurses thought well maybe not seems mm -hmm. okay blah 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 but they went ahead and sent this person and then it turned out that the person had uh, sepsis oh so my. it was really good that they went to the hospital and it just felt so you know it's I, I know that this is it's we've struggled a lot around a lot of things and so it was just so heartening to me to hear that um you know my daughter's bringing her their sensibility to this um, population that really needs it and that they're benefiting and I just felt so like I just felt like joy awakened in me in a very subtle kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank that's you. wonderful. And what a wonderful way for this person and their whole family to feel seen and to feel honored in that way, you know, yeah, to have the help that they need. Yeah. This is all optional and just our, our kind of soft landing place. If there isn't anything else bubbling up, we can get officially started. Last call. Okay, well. So. I already mentioned this once, but I'll mention it again. My name is Nicole Chase, and I'm here in Eve Ekman's place. And I'm so thrilled to be here with all of you here in person and online. I um, went to the SF Dharma Center way back when, before the pandemic, um, when it was in a different location. So it's really sweet to be here in this space. It really feels nice. It really feels... Um, I can tell that there's been a lot of practice, a lot of intentional practice that has been done in this space. It really feels feels wonderful. 
Um, so Eve and I have known each other for a long time. It was this kind of thing where we our lives were in orbit of one another and we kept on running into each other and we kept on finding that we had friends in common. And we we kind of knew that there this was an auspicious sort of meeting and relationship. We just kept on kind of coming into contact. Um, and I and she both knew that at some point it would become something. And recently we finally got the opportunity to connect um, on a deeper level and to collaborate as mindfulness teachers for a climate resilience class at UCSF. This is a class that's being offered across a bunch of UC campuses, and we got to come in to help students with building you know, resilience for climate distress and also to kind of build those inner resources so that they can come up with these, they all have to come up with a project so that they can take action against, you know, to help with the, the climate crisis. Um, so that's felt really good and really rewarding. And that's why I'm here today is because we have finally had this connection. And she asked if I could come in and fill in and I'm really thrilled to be here. So tonight, what I'd love to kind of talk about and the topic of our of our time here together is on awakening joy. As a yoga and meditation teacher who has studied both Buddhist and yogic traditions of meditation, I'm always interested in how you know, they kind of where where the common threads are between these two traditions. And as it turns out, mudita or this kind of sympathetic joy is something that shows up very prominently within yoga, and it also shows up within Buddhist traditions. Um, mudita, it shows up as one of the four immeasurables, which I think that you've been studying in here. Um, so mudita is in Metta Sutta and is one of the four immeasurables. And Mudita also shows up even in the Yoga Sutras, amongst other things. So as I was preparing for for this time here together today, I thought, okay, well, what, what is really arising that needs to, to come forward as the topic for tonight? I was just like, of course, it's mudita. And what a wonderful topic to explore anyway. We've already started to explore it with the shares moving into our time here together. We were sharing moments that brought us joy recently, maybe today, maybe this week. Um, so we'll be exploring that a little bit doesn't mean that everything should always be joyful. That's not life. So this awakening to joy is an appreciation of when things are joyful and how to kind of bring more of that into our life, regardless of what, what is happening. This kind of idea of mudita or sympathetic joy can be the antidote to jealousy or envy but it also is a way that we can open up to loving awareness and compassion in our own lives, right? So the act, the intention of opening up to and appreciating others' success, others' joy, which is just the practice we were doing, like sharing and appreciating joy that's happening in other people's lives makes us feel more joyful. Did anybody feel that just a little bit? even like in, in that brief little exercise, right? So that's the beautiful thing about this is that it expands quite naturally. The other piece of that though, is that um, mudita itself, it lives within kind of the broader umbrella of what you might call loving kindness practices or loving kindness meditations. And within that umbrella of loving kindness, you have practices that are engaged in offering compassion and loving messages to others, but also included with that is offering ourselves compassion and loving messages. And it's a very important piece of this puzzle because if we can't send ourselves loving messages, we don't have nearly as much capacity to be able to send out loving messages to others, to have this kind of sense and approach life from this sense of having sympathetic joy. It's like, oh my gosh, that success or that, that joy that that person has in their life. Like you can kind of merge with it and be a part of it and help to, to grow and expand. So, this is part of the reason why we're going to start with self 
compassion tonight. I think that those of you who were here when Eve announced the lineup of teachers, and she mentioned me, she mentioned that I often lead yoga nidra practice. Has anybody here practiced yoga nidra? Yeah? Okay, so some of you have. Yoga nidra, it's kind of like meditation, but it's um, the aim is slightly different. It's very structured. Right? And you go through multiple different phases that are meant to drop you into, yes, a, a very aware state, but a state that brings you closer to a deep rest state with awareness. In sleep, we get to the deep rest state, which is the most restorative type of sleeping and kind of rejuvenates our whole body, our whole system. So the idea is that within yoga nidra, we're aiming to get to that state, but instead of it being like outside of our conscious awareness, it's that we're bringing consciousness to it. And in bringing consciousness to it through practice, we can come into that state more often. So we will do a yoga nidra practice tonight use in a seated position. Sometimes this is done lying down, but you'll do it in a seated position tonight, just so you can get a sense of what this practice is like. Um, yoga Nidra isn't necessarily a loving kindness practice, but I very much feel that it is a practice that is nurturing and brings self-awareness and self-compassion. You go through exploring all the different layers of yourself including thoughts, emotion, including body sensations. So we do a full body scan, including breath, including the things that are meaningful to you in your life. So we get to kind of go through this journey of exploring all of the layers of ourself, of our being. And I invite you to approach this practice, exploring these layers in a way that's kind of celebrating each layer to the degree that you can this evening, say like, oh, and there's my breath. And I'm so thankful for my breath. I'm so grateful for my breath. So that in mind, let's take a couple breaths together. Inhale deeply. Exhale completely. And just two more deep breaths, really use soaking it up. Saying to yourself, I'm grateful for a breath. I'm grateful for this thing called breath. And a few deep breaths creates a big shift internally. Um, I'll pause before we officially get started to say, ask if there's any questions or anything that, that needs to be answered before we go. No? All right. So come into a comfortable seated position. And from this comfortable seated position, if you have support behind you, allow yourself to sink into that support. So this is not the practice where you have to sit at the edge of your chair. This is like a, let's get cozy. Yeah. Let's sink in, offer ourselves all the support that we desire. And I invite you here to either soften your gaze or close your eyes completely. Sinking in. Mm. Just settling in. I'll give you one more piece of information before we officially start the practice. If you were here when Eve announced about the lineup. And she also mentioned that I'm a musician. And those of you who weren't there for the announcement. I will be coming in at the end of our yoga nidra practice with a chant that's related to, in chant in Sanskrit that's related to the topic. So settling in to your body. And at first, simply feeling your body and feeling the support that your body has, the floor, maybe the chair, 
or cushion underneath you. If you're seated in a chair, maybe feeling your back against the back of the chair. Simply allowing yourself to be supported here. Celebrating yourself in this body, your body. Allowing your body to have this support. Beginning to notice subtle breathing, a simple rise and fall with each breath. Breath with its own tempo, with its own rhythm. Breath that brings life. And as you notice your body, as you notice your breath, to the degree that you can in this moment, perhaps sending a message like, thank you, body. You do so much work for me every day. You got me here. Even getting here is an act of self-compassion. Thank you, breath. I'm grateful for you, breath. You bring life. You bring vitality. Now I invite you to begin to explore something that you might call your heartfelt mission. It also be called your purpose or a purpose in life, something that's meaningful to you. I'm taking a moment to connect with that thing that is a heartfelt mission or gives you a sense of purpose. Connecting with it and noticing how it makes you feel when you connect with that thing. Body sensations. Feelings. Maybe even thoughts. Even noticing perhaps where in your body you feel those sensations or feelings. Now we'll move to one intention that you would like to bring into your practice, this practice here and now. It might be related to your heartfelt mission or purpose. It might be related just to this practice. Maybe it's, I want to remain present for this practice as much as is possible. I want to stay with my body and breath. One small intention for your practice.
I invite you to move to one more piece before we move through the body. And this piece is finding an inner resource. And for today, I would love for you to find a resource in the form of something that brings you joy or happiness or a sense of playfulness. Maybe it's connected to a particular place or memory or a person or a pet. Connecting with one thing that gives you a sense of well-being and maybe even joy. Allowing for a few moments for that to expand and become really crystallized. Now this resource that you've just connected with is a place that you can go back to at any time during this practice. If any piece feels like it's not right today, feels like too much, this is the safe timeout zone. So giving yourself permission right now to come back to this place of resource any time you need it. We'll begin to move through the body. Begin by noticing the hinges of your jaw. Just sensation that's arising in this area of your body. the hinges of your jaw and close to your ears. Noticing sensations arising in your mouth, your tongue, lips and teeth. space in your whole mouth and jaw just as sensation and I invite you to move to sen sensations arising in your ears including your outer ears your middle ears, all the way deep down in your inner ears, opening up to sensation. Now moving to your nose. Feeling the air as it moves in and out of both nostrils. Perhaps noticing the coolness of the breath on each inhale. The warmth of your breath on each exhale. Moving to your cheekbones, your temples, and to both eyes. Move just to your left eye. 
Noticing the space that's surrounding your left eye. Underneath your left eye. And the eye itself. Just sensation. Moving now to your right eye. Noticing the space around your eye. Beneath your eye. And the eye itself. Inviting in awareness of both eyes at the same time. Perhaps feeling your eyes rest a little deeper down. Relaxing your eyelids. Resting your eyes in awareness. Now moving to your forehead, to the top of your head, and to the back of your head, including the space just behind your ears and at the base of your skull where your head meets the top of your spine. Thinking perhaps of creating a little bit more space behind your ears and in the space where your head meets your spine. And I invite you to move into sensations arising in your neck and throat. Sensations in both shoulders. Feeling your shoulder blades slide down your back. Mm. Moving your attention to just your left shoulder. Down into the upper left arm. Forearm wrist, palm, and fingers. Maybe feeling the warmth in your left palm. And feeling your left arm and hand at the same time. Just sensation. Moving back to your left shoulder and then to the right shoulder. Right upper arm, forearm, wrist, palm, and fingers. Again, maybe feeling some warmth or at least whatever sensation is there in your right palm. Feeling your right arm and hand at the same time. I invite you to feel now awareness expanding up through your right arm, down into your left arm, so that you feel both arms and both hands at the same time. Awakening both upper limbs to awareness. I invite you to gently move to your upper back and upper chest, 
to your mid back and mid chest, to your low belly and your low back. Awakening to sensations arising in your whole torso, your midsection. Moving awareness to the pelvic region, including the top, the pelvis near your waist, space inside the pelvis, and the pelvic floor. Awakening to your hip bones as they meet your pelvis. Moving to your left hip joint and down through the upper leg, the upper leg bone, into your lower leg, your ankle, foot, and toes. Chest sensation. Awakening to all sensations, including tingling, freedom or tension, warmth or coolness. Moving back up through your left leg. Move your attention over to your right hip joint. Moving down through your upper right leg. Your lower leg your ankle, foot, and toes. Weakening sensation in your right leg and foot. Just sensation. Expanding awareness to include both legs and both feet at the same time. Feeling the support of your legs. Resting on the support of the surfaces that are holding your weight. And expanding yet again, keeping awareness of your legs now begin to add the torso, the midsection, to awareness. And adding both arms to awareness. Moving up to your neck, head, and face until your entire body comes into awareness as a radiant field of sensation. Noticing the interplay. Noticing the myriad of sensations. The vibrancy and vitality. And as you notice your whole body as a field of sensation, allowing that to still be there, I invite you to awaken your awareness of your breath. It's been with us this whole time. And simply noticing breathing. For a few rounds of breath, perhaps noticing the rise and fall of breathing. And if it serves your practice, you might, with each exhale, you might say inside your head, you might say a little thank you. 
It's a little thank you for this breath. And again, thank you for the next one. Grateful for each breath. Each breath a thank you. And keeping our bodies and sensations that arise there, keeping our breath, expand our awareness to any feelings, any emotional content that is arising. Approaching it as a curious observer not trying to change anything, inviting in anything that's arising, kind of as a messenger, a welcome guest, something that we can greet with kindness and compassion. Keeping all of this with us now, expanding to notice any thoughts that are rising, any thinking, which can take the shape of a memory. It can be something that's pure imagination. Might even find yourself planning planning dinner, for example, or thinking about a conversation you had earlier today. Noticing thinking. Finally, expanding, keeping all of these layers of ourselves with us. Expanding beyond all of these self-identified layers and seeing maybe the space just beyond your skin. might call it something like your energetic field space that you take up representing all of you and how you emanates out until you feel yourself and are seeing yourself as kind of more of an observer, part of something greater. And great yourself. It's expanding your awareness. Almost like you're a particle of, of the whole of everything. and settling in to that. From this expanded place, we'll revisit that thing 
the thing you identified. Maybe you've been there a couple of times during practice already, but that thing you connected with that brought you a feeling of joy or happiness or well-being. And revisiting, remembering the intention you set for practice. And also recalling your heartfelt mission and purpose. Lingering here for a few moments longer. Noticing it all. Sensations, breath, feelings, thoughts. Yourself as a part of everything. And that which brings you joy. Taking your time with this transition, I invite you to very slowly open your eyes if they have been closed and as you come back into the space, you may shift your position if needed, you may stretch, I just find it very helpful. And you may also look around the space too. Sometimes it's really helpful when you've been with eyes closed going through the internal space to just reorient to the outside world. So it's helpful. Just looking around a little bit. Yeah, maybe standing up and stretching. Good. Ooh. So we're going to re-enter some sharing really lightly. I want you to take your time. That was kind of a yoga nidra, and I probably should have said this before we went in. It's kind of a longish practice to go through the whole thing. <laughs> um, but I did want to kind of give you, especially for those of you who haven't experienced yoga nidra before, the full kind of experience, because if you only do a part of it, it's not the same. So I would love to, to leave some space for any reflections that you have, any questions that are coming up and anything that you noticed in practice. Again, we're just going to take our time with this. I always feel a bit more relaxed after that whole process. So if you were to ask me right now, like, and now share, I'd be like, Really? <laughs> so yeah, do take your time. Yeah. I think. Hey. Oh. Mike. I think there was someone who wanted to share online too, but let's go. We have someone here too. So I, I found it to be um, um kind of verging on the deep sleep mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so i was just wondering if you could talk about that because it's also very conscious yeah um so if you know anything about the science of that or just even just you know the brain wave yeah yeah so there has been some scientific study into this um 
I don't know that there is enough scientific study to, to know like reliably what exactly is happening, but the whole purpose of the practice and why it was developed and what it reliably does. So what has been studied at this point through, through trials is that it does reliably bring you into that kind of deep rest state. A big part of that is the body scan and the particular order of the body scan, which always starts with the face and moves down through the body, which tends to kind of bring the brain into that place of, of relaxation and ability to kind of let go into those deeper rest states. Um, I studied I rest with Richard Miller, and there's a lot of um, cited studies within that tradition about the, you know, why it is effective. Um, if you're a research scientist, I don't know that you would say like there's enough body of research at this point to to kind of like pinpoint like this is always true and this is always right. But um, but yeah, there is some study to be looked at for that. And you're describing exactly what the practice is supposed to do. So that's fantastic. Yeah, thanks for sharing. Yeah. Is there some someone online hi, that yes. wants to share? Yeah, yes. hi. Hi, I'm Welcome. Elizabeth. Um, she, hi, Elizabeth. Her, and mm -hmm. thank you very much. Um, it was it was perfect. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, particularly interesting to me because um, 20 years ago, I was part of a, a, a meditation group and the leaders were using multiple modalities and mm -hmm. I didn't know the name for this. But yeah. um, that that group um, dissolved, and I've been seeking this uh, mm -hmm. since that happened. And so I'm incredibly grateful for this opportunity to identify the practice um, yeah. to to go back into because it's been missed. So thank you. Wonderful. You're so welcome. Thank you for sharing. I'm glad that it felt so so effective and that you can reconnect with that now. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Someone else eyes wants to comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please. please. Um I just really appreciate it. I was um I was sort of feeling very uh, well sad, but also just heavy when I came in because I just just I just got some bad news about two different friends' health this week, totally separate. Mm, um, so and but so I just it it just helped me feel I don't know just lighter. And, and for some reason, my mom died last October, and for some reason she kept coming up in it, but in a really wow. nice way. Like I felt like it was really comforting. And yeah. I don't know. I just it was just really wonderful, and I just felt so much better than I did when I came in. When I was just feeling so. I don't know, just so like the weight of the world on my shoulders kind of, and I just, yeah. so um, thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. It's amazing. Amazing to connect with your mother in that way too. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I feel that. It's great. Yeah, please. Yes. Hello. Thank you. Um, yeah, I mean, I I've been really um, in my head uh, for a bit for a few days now, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, for yeah, relationship problems, right? And obsessing about the future, and obsessing about myself, and obsessing about my plans alone, and obsessing about you know whether or not there's going to be plans, you know. So just obsessing, 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 and. Um, yeah. And so it was, it was, it was, it was great to just like, to, to kind of have that come in, but then also to follow your, your guide and to kind of let all of that go. I mean, eventually I did fall asleep. Um, great. Yeah. And so that was okay <laughs> too. Um, but yeah, I mean, usually when that happens, I'm like holding a lot of anxiety and, and when, when I can come, when I've been able to like meditate, um like that and i fall asleep usually it's like a like a, there's like some some level of release that i'm yeah. so um that was lovely um I, there was like a part where we were supposed to like 
I think this is right when I was on the edge of sleeping, but mm -hmm. when we were supposed to like notice some like heat above our head or something like that, not at the beginning, but was I imagine? I don't know. Some heat. But, yeah, I had some like weird visual stuff happening. So that was, that was cool. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like after like, we went down to the toes. And then yeah. The leg, and then, yeah. So I don't know. So but yeah, maybe, was, that was true. Yeah. It was like I was. Trippy. I was under the water and then staring up like at the, the sky reflecting through the water. Really cool visuals. You know, I, that, that, huh? <laughs> we can get there other ways. Um, so maybe it came in the part when I was talking us through expanding the sense of self. Right. So, so we went through all the different layers, including the body and body sensations, the breath, including emotions and feelings, including thoughts. And then we started to kind of expand the space just beyond the body. And then even further, like to the degree that you can. And I bet, I bet it came in there. That sounds really cool. Yeah. 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 That's great. That's great. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you so much for sharing. And I personally, I feel like that's always a big win, especially when you come in feeling like you can't really relax in your body. You can't really relax in your mind. If you get relaxed enough to be able to, to fall asleep, to get that, that's, that's a big win. And especially with a, um, a guided practice like yoga nidra, the name of it is yogic sleep right? So the idea is that more and more we can train awareness without falling asleep. But if you fall asleep, it's okay. It's okay. Like it should bring you to that kind of deep relaxation. And if you fall asleep, that's great. That's great. It actually means that you're on the right track. Yeah. Anything else? Yeah, please. What was interesting for me is, um, I got very, very relaxed through the process of everything you took us through. And um, sometimes when I'm really relaxed in meditation, I'm like, I can get dull and kind of nod off. Yeah. But it didn't happen at all, which oh. was really interesting because mm -hmm. I felt that sense of like going there. But yeah. um, maybe I'm able to, I'm really tired today, but I'm able to concentrate somehow. But mm -hmm. yeah, it, it, it had that experience of almost sleeping, but without yeah the losing the consciousness so yeah great yeah and the expansive part was pretty cool too at the end like i could really feel all of that happening so nice yeah that's wonderful thank you yeah you're so welcome thank you for sharing now you're describing exactly what yoga nidra is supposed to do <laughs> hey everyone uh, my name is you and it's good to be here um Hi. i uh you know, came in with a lot of like feelings and emotions and stuff throughout the day yeah. and uh, really appreciated the theme uh, that was just really attracted to me today. Mm. And um, during the instructions, uh, I was very aware of like the differences between the sides of my body and, you know, like we're scanning down, yeah. you know, through the body. And uh, you had an instruction about noticing like the symmetry of noticing like both arms. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Things. And uh, that just really was just really shocking to me, you know, like so much of like my mind and like the the part of my mind that, that kind of generates those like negative feelings, just looking for differences, like differences between me and other people, Wow. Uh, you know, that's kind of like the root of jealousy or, or whatnot. Mm -hmm. And uh, thinking about the, my body and symmetry was just really calming. So thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. I love that. Just even that phrase, it kind of brings up this feeling of of wholeness, of completeness, like the body in symmetry. Um, and we can get so so focused on finding the thing that's different or finding the thing to fix, right? The thing to fix. So how can we see ourselves as whole and how can we even see that as kind of symmetry being a representation of that? That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing. Thank you. There's anything else? I want to leave some space for it. Oh, Jason, I see you have your hand up there. Hi. Um, I 
am very fascinated by yoga nidra and I've experienced it in the yoga classes as shavasana. Um, yeah. You know, that, that moment yeah. where ah, oh, I'm finally done with the work and yeah. ready to relax. And it never lasts long enough because <laughs> everybody has to get up and leave, you know. Um, but I would love to do, I would like to know more about your practice and, and where I might be able to combine a very, you know, a physical yoga class, maybe not too intense with yeah. the extended yoga nidra shavasana. Is that something you're practicing or can you talk a little bit about your, what you kind of, what that is and how it fits into your practice? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think that that is a really great way to practice. I, I don't, um, I have taught experiences that way where it's a more vigorous yoga practice and then, then a longer Shavasana in the form of yoga nidra. I don't always teach that way. So I often teach them separately as well. Um, but I think it's a really, really beautiful way to engage in the practice. I, I think that part of the reason why I don't regularly offer it that way is because people have a limited amount of time. So I would say that minimum, that whole experience to do all of it justice would take at least 90 minutes. Now, we all here have taken 90 minutes out of our busy schedule to be here together and to be in practice, but this is not the norm. So maybe even take a moment and like give yourself a little congrats. Congratulations, Pat, on the back. Um, the the current trend of things is for these kinds of classes or experiences to be shorter and shorter. So a typical, so in a typical yoga studio, most classes now are sixty minutes, and ones that are longer than that tend um, to be extremely rare and increasingly rare. So yes, I do teach it that way. I don't teach it all the time that way, but I think it's a really, really beautiful way to engage it. They pair extremely well together. And that's often how I practice myself. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, I noticed that nobody has mentioned pain, which I yes. think is really interesting. Yes. I wonder if that means that nobody is experiencing pain in this room mm -hmm. um, when they were in that practice, but I certainly am probably always experiencing some form of physical pain. Sure. And, you know, I also like um, where I work, like everyone that I work with experiences pain. And um, I'm just wondering you know, I was able to, sometimes I can say to myself, okay, that's like not a negative sensation. It's just an interesting sensation or like, it's just, this is, this is the sensation and, and not think of it as like painful. Right. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. Um, but like mostly not mostly I have to move around and I notice like I do meditation with the women that I work with. Mm -hmm simple not well sometimes i do body scans yeah. and i notice that many of them just cannot stop moving for like any not even like three seconds sure. like they're constantly like rocking and stuff i work with women with trauma and i'm just wondering like i know about the like imagine it as just a sensation without labeling it as pain or judgment but are there any other what else is there yeah I'm so, so glad that you brought up, brought this into the conversation. This is a really key piece for, for everyone. So, and I think that probably, I mean, I can even say from my own experience, I at least felt discomfort in my body at some point, at many points along the way within the practice. And that happens with every practice. And I think what you're, what you're speaking to is a really good strategy. If it feels like it is, it is helpful and you have the capacity to kind of be with the pain or the discomfort. Um, if it kind of passes the threshold and is really occupying a lot of, of head space, it might actually not be serving the practice, right? And especially if it's connected to some something that was traumatic and is living in the body, it, it might not, you might not have the capacity to be with it. And it's not like really advisable to, to stay with that. So there's kind of like the 
the pain or the discomfort that you can be with and kind of label and make space for and soften around. That's one strategy. But another great strategy is to notice when it's too much, right? Which I personally, like, and I'm not like, I am not a traditional meditation and, and yoga nidra teacher. I tell people like you can move, like you can totally move. You don't have to stay. You can shift positions. You can stand up if you need to. Like, I mean, if you're feeling stuff inside and you're feeling a lot of pain, discomfort, it feels like what you're going to injure yourself, or you just feel like there's a lot of kind of internal storm happening, even in, in addition to that. You can move, you can get up, you can walk around, you can come back. So having that choice and that permission, I think more than anything is essential and really, really important. Now, one particular strategy that I really love and I invite those of you who would like to, to do this along with me, just sway from side to side. You can simply watch or you can When I'm feeling a lot of discomfort or pain, or if I'm feeling like I like distressed and I still want to try to engage with any type of meditation practice, I will often do this. I think it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's soothing. It's calming. It's, it's a, a body motion that, that does soothe the nervous system. Like it has a direct relationship to what's happening in the nervous system and the pain, like physical pain could be related to that or not. And if it's not, then you like actually move your body to get it out of that, that kind of like acute danger zone. Is this making sense? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, choice, like giving yourself permission to move giving yourself permission to have your, your meditation practice not look like what traditionally is thought of as meditation practice. It's about our presence of mind, period. That's, that's my, that's my take. I think there's a tension between that, like, move and try to not move, like try not to react. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Like when, yeah. You, when you're trying to develop this idea of pausing yeah. Not reacting. Yeah. Totally. There absolutely is. And then the the kind of challenge is noticing when you're you create this habit of always moving when you feel the thing, right? Then it could be a useful practice to to stay with it for maybe even just a little bit longer before you move or shift positions just to, to kind of notice, well, you know, is that becoming a hindrance to my progress or is it actually a good idea to, to move when, when I'm feeling that? Like is being still, insisting on being still a hindrance to my practice or is always moving being becoming a hindrance to my practice? Both can be. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. It's confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's confusing. Thank you so much for bringing that in. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Susan. Oh, someone share something in the chat. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Maria. Yeah. So probably talking about the swaying. Is that what you were referring to? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's a good practice. It's a good practice. And it's, it's an easy thing to bring into meditation, right? Who's going to notice with, with your eyes closed if you're swaying gently from side to side? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes that happens just during walking meditation too. Yeah. Just stop and sway a yeah. little for a minute. Yeah. Movement. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. That's very skillful. Very skillful. All right. Anything else? Yeah, yeah please. I have to say that I've had teachers both from China and in Burma start us at the beginning of sitting meditation practice with swaying nice. back and forth. 
Awesome. Side to side and front to back. Yeah. So that it's a, it's, it's not contrary to the, to the tradition at all. It's, it's, yeah. very, you know, and these are like, these are, you know, these, these old Asian guys that have been doing this for a long, 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 long time. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely a part of that practice. It's cool. Know? So. Yeah, that's that's really good to know that we can kind of get in here with our maybe perhaps Western interpretation of these things and say, well, no, we're supposed to sit still. <laughs> Love that. Thanks for sharing. I have an extra joy thing that was just coming up. I'm about, to, about to go to a yoga retreat and it's restorative yoga. Wonderful. So similar to Yoga Nidra. Anyway, awesome. this felt like a great uh, preview. Wonderful. Wonderful. Where's where's your retreat? Scotland. In Scotland. How fun. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing and have a wonderful time on your retreat. Thank you. Yeah. Do we feel complete? Anything else? Okay. I'm going to move on to just a little bit more because I do want to make sure that we at least get to a little bit more of our topic. We've already, through the Yoga Nidra practice and um, also kind of leading into, into the practice, we've started talking about this kind of connection with expansion, movement toward, toward a feeling of joy and the things that bring us joy in, in our life. And, and in giving ourselves self-compassion and awakening to the joy that we can feel, that we can become more open for mudita or this kind of sympathetic joy and really celebrating the joy that other people have in their lives, celebrating success, celebrating other people's happiness. Um, and it is something that does take practice. Uh, I did mention that this term mudita, it shows up in both Buddhist and yogic traditions. It shows up in the Metta Sutta. And I'm going to read just a little bit of Metta Sutta. And this translation is by Bhikkhu Bodhi. And toward the whole world, one should develop loving kindness, a state of mind without boundaries, above, below, and across, unconfined, without enmity, without adversaries. This kind of makes me feel, makes me connect with that state, the last piece of the yoga nidra practice, this feeling of like, oh yeah, you know, my joy, your joy is my joy. My joy is your joy. My happiness is your happiness and vice versa. How can we kind of see ourselves in this, this kind of reciprocity, this world of reciprocity and see it without boundaries, develop not only just loving kindness, but the most expansive type of loving kindness is really, really the aim. It's a no small task, but I think that we're all capable. And in the Yoga Sutras, it shows up in the first chapter 33, 33rd Sutra, um, and this translation is by Edwin F. Bryant. It says, by cultivating an attitude of friendship toward those who are happy, compassion toward those who are in distress, joy toward those who are virtuous, and equanimity toward those who are non-virtuous, even non-virtuous, lucidity arises in the mind so this is this kind of equanimity lucidity that arises in the mind this kind of birthplace of vitality of really living from this place of of joy and celebrating all joy yours and and everyone else's now Commentary goes on to say in this translation, since the commentators have pointed out some fundamental differences between Buddhism and yoga, when it seems to, when it comes to consciousness, we can note with this sutra, a similarity. 
the four practices noted in this sutra, friendship, maitri, compassion, karuna, joy, mudita, which is our topic for tonight, and equanimity, upeksha, correspond exactly to the four Brahma Viharas, or the four measurables, outlined in various Buddhist suttas, rendered in Pali as metta, karuna, mudita, upeka. So these really do map onto each other. And if you have done any kind of comparative religious studies of any sort, you'll know that, that Hinduism and Buddhism are very kind of closely linked. And they're a part of, if you go back far enough, a part of a, a same lineage, right? They become different things and include different practices and different ways of seeing the world. But, but they are, you know, they're part of the same history. And so you find these, these similarities between the two, which is kind of the world that I like to kind of swim in and move in because I'm, I'm interested in both. And I think that they, um, they provide a lot of really wonderful, beautiful lessons and practices. So what we'll move into as we bring it to a close is I'd like us to do more of a loving kindness practice. It's going to be a really brief one. Um, but before we move into the, to the loving kindness practice, I would love to hear if anything else is arising for you in kind of sharing about mudita, um, maybe even if there are any experiences where you've had this kind of sympathetic joy. We already, you know, heard some of like, it made me feel so much joy when my, you know, my loved one did this thing. And that was so, so wonderful. Um, but does anything, anything else bubbling up, anything want to be shared about Mudita? Yes, please. Hello yeah. again. Um, so it was interesting that you framed the question in that way. Because my my well of joy that um, I was 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 returning to during the meditation during the practice was uh, my dog's eyes dancing, oh, um, with 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 that. joy and love and and yeah. what is what is what makes this I think particularly in, um, relevant and I love when things line up to the to the focus of self-compassion and joy is that this dog, um, she's a rescue. Um, she mm -hmm. was, uh, used as a breeder in a puppy mill. And when we got wow. her, she was so shut down. She sat in the corner and shook oh. and to go from it's, it's been a year and a half almost. And to go from that place to exhibiting pure joy, Oh. And her eyes dancing and she does these, these helicopter spins and, and <laughs> she's not afraid to come and like demand my, my attention and tell me what she wants. And the, like the witnessing like of that is so remarkable. And the way it mm -hmm. all tied together today was just beautiful. Oh, that's so wonderful. That that fills me with joy. I'm feeling all kinds of mudita over here. <laughs> um, yeah, I've definitely experienced that with with furry loved ones. Like, I, I feel like in some ways that is the purest expression of joy that we can come into contact with. Sometimes, just I mean, just the purity of love. It's just like and and the the kind of fidelity of that that love too is just feels immovable. Um, it is. So so yeah yeah beautiful yeah. beautiful. Thank you. Mm. Open for anybody else to share. I'll just wait a little bit longer if anything. It's coming to the surface. Okay. Shall we do a loving kindness practice? Okay. <laughs> so arranging your body. Mm. Just as we're getting settled, so how many of you have done a uh, loving kindness practice? Okay. So as you know, 
there are, you know, loving phrases that are sent out um, and um, they vary a little bit. So I'll give you kind of phrases that I tend to like to use and, and we'll move through a few of these layers in short loving kindness practice tonight. So in a comfortable seated position, you know, those of you who feel called to take a different position too, this is also part of how we can can navigate discomfort or pain standing or lying down, perfectly fine positions to come into, especially if you're at home and you wanna make that decision, that's fine. I invite you to either soften your gaze or close your eyes, bringing the attention within. And again, we'll feel the support underneath our bodies and feel even perhaps how gravity is support hugs us into the support that's holding the weight of the body. And allowing the body to either be in stillness or to invite a sway. I just want to be explicit about inviting that in if that feels right. Because we started with awakening self-compassion, we'll begin our loving kindness phrases with, with ourselves. We'll move out from there. So beginning with saying to yourself in your head, may I be filled with loving kindness. Saying to yourself, may I be safe from inner and outer dangers. May I be well in body and mind. May I be at ease and happy. And again, sending these messages to yourself. May I be filled, filled up with loving kindness. May I be safe from inner and outer harm of any sort. May I be well in both my body and in my mind. May I be at ease and happy, joyful. feeling that resonate and I'm turning toward connecting with another living being that is really easy to love, easy to connect with. It could be a pet with joy dancing in its eyes could be could be a person could be some living thing in nature this thing that's easy to love sending the message may you be filled with loving kindness And may you be safe from all inner and outer harm. May you be well in both body and in mind. May you be at ease and happy.
joyful. And again, may you be filled with so much loving kindness. I wish that for you. May you be safe from all inner and outer harm. May you be well in both your body, your heart, your mind, all parts of you. And may you be at ease. May you be happy and filled with joy. Feeling it expand and resonate, maybe repeating the phrases again, if you feel called. Now shifting to become aware of all the people that are here in this practice room, including those of you joining online and those of you here in physical space. Sending these messages to our practice Sangha, to everyone here now, saying, may you all be filled, filled up with loving kindness. May you be safe from both inner and outer harm May you be well, your body, heart, and mind. And may you be at ease, may you be happy, may your life be filled with joy. And again, sending these messages to our Sangha May you all be filled, filled up with loving kindness. And may you be safe from all inner and outer harm of any kind. May you be well in your whole body, in your heart, and in your mind. May you be at ease. May your life be filled with happiness and joy. I wish this for you. I wish this for us. And I invite you to expand your awareness to include everyone who lives in this area, the Bay Area, in San Francisco, in the surrounding areas, East Bay. South Bay. Expanding to bring into awareness people that are living relatively close. Sending the phrases, may you all be filled with loving kindness. May you be safe from inner and outer harm. Mm. May you be well in your body, in your heart, and in your mind. May you be at ease, joyful, happy.
and again to this bigger group may be filled with so much loving kindness. May you be safe from both inner and outer harm of any kind. May you be well in your body and in your heart and in your mind. May your life be filled with ease, happiness, and joy. One more time, expanding out perhaps to include all of our state that we're in, California, maybe all of our country, all the countries in this beautiful world, perhaps including all the life that lives in this world, our human species, but also all of the other vibrant, beautiful life. Seeing ourselves as a citizen of not only humanity, but of the life here. Part of this, just one particle of this whole beautiful something. And with that expansive view now, including yourself as a part of this, say, may we be filled with loving kindness and may we be safe from both inner and outer harm of any kind. May we be very well in our body, our heart, and our minds. May we be at ease, joyful, and happy. And again, may, may we all be filled with so much loving kindness. May we be safe from both inner and outer harm of any kind. May we be very well in our bodies, our hearts, and our minds. May we be at ease. May we be happy and filled, filled up with joy. Letting that land in you, letting that expand to all. For just a little while longer, letting it marinate. And I invite you when you feel ready, if your eyes have been closed, you can very gently begin to open them. Again, maybe shifting your position, maybe stretching. Oh, okay. Well. Thank you. Thank you for having me and thank you for practicing.